In this video, we will derive and understand the Fermi energy level of an intrinsic semiconductor. In an intrinsic semiconductor, the electron concentration in the conduction band is equal to the hole concentration in the valence band. And we know the expression for the electron concentration in conduction band, which is given by Nc times e power minus of Ec minus Ef over Kt, which is equal to the hole concentration in valence band which is equal to NV times E for minus of EF minus EV over KT. If we rewrite this expression, taking exponentials to the left side and NC NV to the right side, we have, and we can further rewrite this as E for minus of EC minus EF minus EF plus EV over KT, which is equal to NV over NC. We can take LN on both sides, then we will have minus of EC plus EV minus 2EF over KT is equal to ln of NV over NC. So we can rewrite this expression as minus of EC plus EV plus 2EF is equal to KT times ln of NV over NC. Then we can write EF is equal to EC plus EV over 2 plus KT over 2 times ln of NV over NC. And we know the expressions for NV and NC here. So if we take the values of NV over NC, we know NV is 2 times 2 pi KT times MH star, the effective mass of whole over h square whole part 3 by 2 divided by the value of nc which is 2 times 2 pi kt over h square times mn star whole part 3 by 2 this can be written as the 2 2 gets cancelled 2 pi kt h square gets cancelled now we are left with m h star over mn star whole power 3 by 2 if we substitute this NV over NC as this value into this expression, we can write the EF to be is equal to EC plus EV by 2 plus KT over 2 times ln of MH star over MN star. We have a whole power 3 by 2. We can take the 3 by 2 out of this ln, so we can have it here. So we can finally represent this in two forms. But the Fermi energy level that we derived here is actually the Fermi energy level for intrinsic semiconductor. So we will choose a term called E suffix I in place of EF to represent the intrinsic Fermi energy level. EI can be represented in two forms. One with NV and NC, where NV is the effective density of states in valence band and NC is the effective density of states in conduction band. And they can be written in terms of effective mass of hole and effective mass of electron form as well. Now, the question is, where does this EI fall in the energy band diagram? So for reference, I'm drawing the energy band diagram where the top band is the conduction band and the bottom band is the valence band. And we have seen the difference between the bottom edge of the conduction band to the top edge of the valence band is called the forbidden energy gap EG. Now, if you see this expression for EI, we have basically two terms. First one is EC plus EV by two. And the second term is three by four KT times ln of ratio of effective mass of hole to electron. First expression is a fixed one, which is EC plus EV by two. The first term would represent the middle of the energy band gap, which is EC plus EV by 2. The second term value would depend on the ratio of the effective mass of hole to electron. So now we can have three cases where the ratio can be less than 1, equal to 1, or greater than 1. So I'm taking the three cases. Let me call them as case A, case B, and case C. Where case A, mh star, is greater than mn star, which means the ratio is greater than 1. So similarly, nv is greater than nc. So in this, in this first case, we'll have 
the ln value to be positive and in the second case we are taking mh star to be equal to mn star in which case and v will be equal to nc in that case ln of 1 is 0 and the third case where mh star is less than mn star hence we'll have nv less than nc where the ln value would be negative now if we take all these cases and represent so for the first case a we know that if we add a positive value to EC plus EV by 2, the EI would be slightly above this reference value we have here, which is EC plus EV by 2. So this is for the first case A. And for the case B, the second term would be 0, so that EI would be just EC plus EV by 2, which is already represented here. This will be for case B. And now for case C, where MH star is less than MN star, which means the second term would be negative. So we are subtracting a small value from EC plus EV by 2. So that the EI value for case C would be just slightly below the halfway between the energy band gap. And if you observe from this expression, we know for KT, the value at room temperature would be 25 milli electron volts. And usually the ratio of mh star to mn star would not be a very big high value. It will be usually in a single digit value. In that case, ln of that value will be even smaller. So smaller value multiplied with 25 milli electron volts would be even still smaller compared to the EC plus EV by 2, which means the second term would be very small. In this case, we can say this A and C will be very close to the midpoint of the energy band gap. We have certain examples where for silicon, the case C satisfies, which means for silicon, the effective mass of electron is greater than the effective mass of hole. So for silicon, the EI, the intrinsic Fermi energy level would be slightly below the midpoint of the energy band gap. And for gallium arsenide, a compound semiconductor, where the whole effective mass is greater than the electron effective mass. So we have the intrinsic Fermi energy level for gallium arsenide to be slightly above the midpoint of the energy band gap.